that right there. All right, so we're gonna have to talk kind of loud, so it, sorry, I'll cut that, I'll edit that part out. I think if I put it on the edge, it'll pick up the sound better, I think. Yeah. Maybe not. I had it perfect. Wait, no, it's kind of... Maybe lay your bag down. How's that? Fall over. Okay, it's probably gonna fall off. Just don't bump it. All right, so we are, uh, we're doing a little coaching here at uh, SunTrip Hyundai with my buddy Steve here. Now, Steve was a Marine, and he sold uh, 17 cars his first month. We're doing some coaching on proposals. So that's what this video is about, guys. We're just doing some coaching on proposals. So go ahead, Steve. Tell me what's going on. What are, what's some of your biggest challenges with negotiating this? So my biggest thing is I'm really good with people because of my experience in service, and that I get that trust with almost everybody in front of me. But when it comes to the proposal, I feel like people are asking for too much and I'm getting in the habit of asking the desk because I'm, you know, there for the customer, you know, and then when I go to the desk, I end up, you know, I think I'm giving away too much. Okay. So I'm trying to come up with how do I get away from that of not giving away my gross. Okay. And I came up with an idea last night and I have not said to you yet, but it's, well, what if I pointed out the good things about a proposal, like with a different color? On a pen and I was like, okay, so as you can see here, you know, Steve, I can... we got all at one sec. Um, so what you're telling me is that when you're negotiating, you find mm -hmm. yourself losing a lot of ground. Yes. Okay. So I feel like I'm in a, now I'm getting a sales manager mad because I'm coming back to ask for more money. Gotcha. Off. Okay. So what would it mean for you if we could set it up to where you were only taking money off when you had to? That's, ex that's what I want. That's what I need. Yeah. But what would that mean for you? More money in my pocket. Okay, how much more could you make if you... Uh, thousands, probably. I mean... Could be thousands more dollars. If I sold 20 cars a month, I mean, it could be... Okay, and then you know. said it's causing frustration with your managers, so why else Why else is this conversation important? Because then they know I can... They won't... I won't be the guy coming back and giving away cars and getting all minis and... Gotcha. You know, I mean, that's kind of where... So I'm, better relationship better, with your boss. Better, And they'll trust your skills yeah. better. And so, I won't get TO'd. Okay, and, so you know, it's like, safe to say this is an important... The most important. Oh, you get TO'd too? It's I don't, I don't to... get TO'd that much, but okay, it makes the process faster. And then, you know, in the five times I do, it, you know, I think it, I can avoid it because it's usually about closing okay. and right. not giving away. Well, this is important then. Okay, so yeah. take me through your process now. If I, from beginning then, if I'm your customer mm -hmm. and we're about to enter negotiations, how do you lay this out and then walk me through? So every time I, I say, I said, okay guys, so we're, we're on the 25th, this is a mock one, but 2015 Santa Fe. Um, you know, it's got 44,000 miles, the red one, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, okay. So here's the uh, initial payment options that can be customized of uh, longer term if need be. Okay. Um, depending on shorter term and if it's through Hyundai or not, you know, what they qualify for. Uh, 0% or 1.9 through Hyundai. But it, anyway, I said, so initially right here was zero down. We're at 357, 1,000 down, you know, 337, 2,000 down, 316. But you can, and then over here you see we're giving you this for your trade of 5,149. The vehicle that Santa Fe is worth is valued at twenty one thousand six seventy seven. As you, these are your savings for taking off the car, brings the price to here. Added equipment of eight hundred dollars if it's sunroof or whatever they're doing, mm -hmm. it brings you down to this. We also have uh, some sales tax we wanted to add in, an admin fee, uh, you know, registration fee. So it's probably Illinois or something. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can see this is what your trade is here. There's uh, no in uh, negative equity. It brings you to seventeen like this. Okay. And now. What happens when you when you lay it out like that? What is your customer? It's too much. It? It's too. I think it's too much. Like you think it's too. much? I think I'm like saying too much instead of like Tony always says to me like, go out there. Like a few times I'll be like, go out there, say, flip it over. Be like here's your payment with nothing down and shut up. Okay, so let me answer. And question. that does work sometimes. Let me ask you a question. What is the customer's reaction when you lay it out like that? Like you just did for me. The first way or the Tony way? No, your way. The way um, you just explained. Yeah, what, what happened? I feel like it, No, no, what do they do? They want to negotiate. Okay, so tell me what they say. Um, they're really like, well, you know, I, I'd like to see more for my trade. I'd like mm -hmm. to see, um, you know, well, you know, I mean, online, you know, the one that's, you know, is a little bit less. Like, I'd like to really see this at like 19,000 and I'd like to see, more. you know, like they just start negotiating and I don't know if it's, I'm giving them, I'm saying too much, I'm not saying it the right way and that's well, why I came well, up with a different color. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Why would a customer start negotiating when you lay a proposal in front of them? I don't know. I have no idea. Well, let's it go, drives me nuts. Let's go back to when you were at car shopping. Right. right. So what is supposed to happen when you car shop? Pretend you don't sell cars right, right now. 
Take me through like, like what does a customer do when they go car shopping? They look online, they, right? And, and I know where you're going with this because what? I because I get it from Jake all the time. I I get I'm like give me the paper with the market value of the car. Give me the paper that shows where our cars rank on pricing in a 500 mile radius. Mm -hmm. And I use that. Yeah. And they still want money off sometimes. And I'm just not an ass. You know, I'm Again, tar, tar. No, I'm no, not no, a, no, that's you okay. Know, no, you're good. So customers are they believe they're supposed to negotiate when they buy yeah, a car. I agree, yeah. And it's that is the that is the ex expectation and that's what they are planning on doing when they come to the dealer. They know mm -hmm. when it's time to do numbers, it's time to negotiate. Right. Safe to say? Yeah, hundred percent. So if we already know that's what's the expectation, all right, I wanna ask you, where in the rest of your sale are you preventing that expectation from becoming a reality? If anywhere. I'm guessing I need to use words of that asking them the right questions maybe of why they came in when initial and mm -hmm. the needs and analysis of oh, why'd you come in here all this time? Oh, okay, did you see it online? You know, maybe yeah, so let's, maybe just ask them, is that the best price one you've seen? So let's or, say I told you, yeah, let's say I said, yeah, I saw it on autotrader.com. Mm -hmm. Mo are most of your customers internet shoppers or where are they coming most from? Most of them are internet, internet shoppers. Yeah. Most of them are, yeah, right. in, in, in this case. Yeah, I don't want to make any assumptions, so I, you know, I, I really was curious to know if they were internet or not. Now I have a little inside scoop right. because I, I work right. there, but so, so that makes sense. So you're telling me that the majority of them are internet shoppers, and what? So if you were to ask them where did you come in from, and then they said autotrader.com, what could you do then that could prevent them from asking for a discount later? I have no idea. I don't know. Well, you know, yes. well, if you know they can't find it online, how do when people search for a car on Autotrader, what does that look like? Like, how what do they see I mean, when they search? They see the best price cars. I mean, yeah. right? Do, I mean, it's, do they pick the most expensive car and go there? No, no, exactly. So when people do a search online, they're searching for either the, the perfect vehicle right. and then they find the best price right. that matches it, or they look for the, the prices and then they find the best car that fits the price they right. want. Either way, they have decided that they want that that car. Right. Now to prevent them from asking later for a discount, when you find out during your needs assessment, I bought, I saw it on Auto Trader. Right. You could say something like, well, I mean, let me ask you, what could you ask them or what I could mean, you tell them? Oh, did you come to us because that was the best price one? Like, is that what, yeah. That, kind you're, of, you're going on, how do I say yeah. that? Like, yeah, you, you could say, hey, there's two ways customers find cars. Either they look right. for the, the perfect car and then they find the best priced one, or they find the best prices and then they find the perfect right. car that fits that price. Right. Which type, how did you find the car? Online. So you found yeah. the best price. So you, right. did you look for the perfect okay. vehicle, then the best no. price, or the best price, then okay. the perfect vehicle? That's good. I like that because that's you're already setting yourself up later, right? And I'm, and I'm not saying they're telling me, and I'm now, as, uh, yeah. So it doesn't so sound that's, like I'm. That's right. I want to prevent these objections from yeah. even coming up in the first place. Yes. Okay. So that's one way to do it. Now let's say you still lay this thing out. Now, and by the way, your how you rolled this thing out, I want you to take the focus off the negotiations. How you laid this thing out. It was all about the numbers. Right. If you make it all about the numbers, then it's going to be all about the numbers. Okay. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. So instead of laying out and just diving right into the numbers, here's how I want you to do it instead. I want you to hold it up and we need to interrupt the, okay, so people have patterns, all right? right. My buddy John Dawson talks about pattern interrupts. This is a pattern. Customers know that I'm supposed to negotiate once they give me numbers, right? Right. Interrupt the pattern by making it different. So instead right. of laying the numbers out, say, guys, I'm going to show you, we're going to go over, I want to show you how transparent we are here at SunTrop Hyundai. Right. Good. I want you to see all your choices and options. Okay. All right. We're not like most dealerships. Here we believe in transparency and showing you all your choices and options. So I'm going to go over those. But before I show you the numbers, it's imp it's very important that your time is very valuable, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And you want to get in and out of here quickly, right? Right. So I want to make sure that your information and the vehicle information is all correct on the buyer's order. Does that right. sound fair? Right. So I promise we'll go over the numbers, but bear with me before we do. Now, what is the customer looking at instead of the numbers? Right here. That's right. Is this your name and address and stuff right? Is this the correct vehicle? By the way, what are you buying here? Let's make sure this is the right vehicle. You're buying a 2015 Santa Fe GLS two-wheel drive with 44,000 miles. That's a certified unit, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go ahead and write that here. We got to make sure the finance manager knows that this is a CPO. What other options did that vehicle have that were most important to you? Um, I want to make sure again this is the right vehicle. You had said you wanted uh, what options were you looking for? Uh, leather, leather. Okay. Uh, power, power uh, steering. Yeah, power steering. Uh, okay. And then you really said that warranty was important to you, right? Warranty. So it's got the lifetime warranty here. Yep. All right. I like the road track. Okay. So what do you think? What what just happened by me listing those options here and covering this stuff? What you made, you made them think and solidify what they're buying. 
they're buying. That's right. Are they thinking about the numbers at all right now? No, they're thinking about them driving this car. That's right. And I'm re and I'm rebuilding the value that I built. Right. I'm I'm reiterating that I want to be respectful of their time. I found right. you the perfect car. Here's the options that were most important for you. Now, if you start beating me up on price, what can I take away, guys? Right. You wanted a certified. You wanted this. You wanted that. If we're if, it's, if we can have one without leather that's not a CPO with seventy thousand miles, I can be. I get what you're doing. But you already picked out. Right. Lean, lean in here. Oh, but you, you. No, you're good. But you already picked out the best what? Price and a car online. You told me that. Yep. You already found the best price one. You already know that. Yep. Let's not go back and forth. Let's not waste your time. Let's get these numbers in the finance. That's, that's what it's so, like. So go ahead and pick which option you want and sign here. And then if they hit you again, okay? So that's number one. You hold your ground. That's step one, okay? Steve, step two. They hit you again. No, I need a better deal. This needs to be cheaper, whatever. Mr. Customer, I'm no different than you, okay? I want the numbers to be affordable as well for me. But at the end of the day, are you, how much are you going to put down? Are you putting 20% down? By the way, on yeah. the demo drive, are you telling them the best way to buy a car is to put 20% down? I've told most of my customers that. The reason you're telling them that is right for now, because right. now you can leverage that. Mr. Right. Customer, look, I can see you want to lower money down, by the way, that's what that means. I can see you want to finance less money, safe to say? Right. The best way to buy a car, like I told you on the demo drive, is to put 20% down. Now, let me ask you a question. 20% of this would be about four grand. Now, that would take your this down to about 15,000, which is probably right where you want to be. Right, based on what you're telling me. So, how close to the four thousand dollars can you get me right now, so we can get this done, turn into finance, and get you out of here quickly? Right. So yeah, now I'm. Do you see how I'm, now I'm negotiating, but not on what they want to negotiate on. I'm negotiating right. on what protects my gross and my value. Right. Do you see the difference? Yeah. So yeah. now I'm negotiating on money down. Let's say they hit you a third time, and they say, "Well, I can do three grand down." Okay, perfect. Three grand. Go ahead and sign right here, and I'll get this turned in and get you out of here in a jiffy. By the way, let's say they hit you a third time. Now, what, you, what do you think you do? No, I need a better deal. I need this to be cheaper. Now, what do you do? Re put value back in the car, I guess. I mean, That's right. So, anyways. a takeaway. You could do a takeaway. You'd say, hey, look, Mr. Customer, I can understand yeah. you want to finance less and you're not doing the money now. So, what, which one of these can you live without? Can you yeah. go without the CPO? Because remember, I mentioned to you when we were pulling off the lot, I could do a non certified car. That would be two or three grand less, yeah. 30 or $50 less per month. Does that sound good to you? Do you want to go ahead and go to a non-CPO, or do you want to go ahead and switch one without the leather? What are your thoughts right. here? See what I mean? Because right. that. So next, you go to the options. You take away the options. Okay. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Maybe I showed you too much car, or maybe when you picked this out online, your expectation was that dealers had two thousand right. dollars markup. We just don't. Right. Okay. In fact, our prices. We use right. software to price our cars. They're extremely competitive. And as you see, this is the perfect car for you. We've come this far. Right. Let's just get it done there. So if you do this, so we've done three steps where the customer's trying to negotiate, and what haven't we done? Taken any money off. We I mean, haven't taken any money off. Yeah, and have we gone to the desk? No. And what percentage of customers will, what will will be, like, uh, I mean, what percentage will end up signing at one of these three things? The people I've dealt with, I don't know, probably ninety percent. Yeah. I could have used this. Yeah. I mean. That's what I'm teaching you. You must pay two years sick in my class. But check this out, yeah. though, Steve. Check this out. Now, this is important, too, because I want you to know four, five, and six, okay? So four, the next best thing to negotiate on is payment. But it's important you understand this. Now, once you're at four, you're getting into your, your pocketbook. You're starting mm -hmm. payment. Five is your, um, five is your uh, after payment, it's trade allowance. And then six is the price of the car. So next, I'm going to say, look, Mr. Customer, you are financing this car. You're not paying cash for it. So it's important that we focus on this area here. You know, obviously, you know, getting something off is important to you. Right. You know, how close do you need to be on payment? And I come down in two dollar increments. I would say something like, "What are you thinking? Like three fifty-five? But do you see how? What did I do there? I exit out. If I x out that at this point, I exit out. Why am I xing that out? Why is that important? They think you're saving money. That's they right. Are. That's right. They see they you're willing to work they, with them yeah. now. Yeah. That's... And now, but I came down two bucks. Not yeah. going to take anything. Maybe take anything yeah. because we got rate and term to negotiate right. on too. Right. Right. So ultimately, now they're going to say, no, that, that's not enough. What are you talking about? Right. Well, why is that not enough? Well, you need to take way more off than that. Okay, well, let me ask this. And now I X out that number. Where do you need to be within reason? Yeah. Go ahead. Give me a number. Where do you need to be, Steve? Uh, 325. 325. So you're telling me you'll own this thing right now if I can get it to right around 325. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd buy it for that too, man. Seriously, I need, yeah. a, re I need a reasonable good. offer. Right. Okay, get me closer to this number right. here. No, maybe I can push like 340. Okay, 340. All right, listen to this. I'm in your corner. I'm going to go to bat for you. 
Okay, wish me luck. Um, but just so you know, but, um, when I say go to bat for you, you know, it's, it's up to me ultimately, but I know how much room we have, but I, I've got to, you know, my manager and I are going to look it over and see what we can do to help you. But I just need you to be a little flexible and keep a little bit of an open mind, okay? Right. By the way, while I take this to the manager, I want you to look over this evidence manual right. to see, um, you know, to see, read, read this over. You'll see why you should buy a car from me. Okay. By the way, so what do you think happens when you go to the desk and you leave your customer by themselves t during negotiations? What are they going to do? Oh, they're going to talk. They're going to talk. They're going to pull out their cell, cell phone phones. and start looking oh, yeah. at better pricing. Yep. Yep. You hand them an evidence manual that builds value in you, that has your reviews and your delivery photos. I'm building it too. It's... You've got control now of the customer yeah. without you being there and you're building value. That's important. Now, what do you think happens when you go to the desk and this is scribbled like this? Look, see this here, guys? <laughs> Honestly. They're... What do you think the manager's thinking when you show them that? What? They'll actually probably let me talk. Like what's going on? Exactly. Instead of telling yeah. me what to do, like, yeah. Honestly, they'll probably be like, well, "Okay, what what's going on here? Tell and, me." And, and exactly. And you know what else they're gonna think? They think you're working for the store. Yeah. You know, salespeople. By the way, for anyone who watches this video, if you bring a blank buyer's order to the desk when a customer makes you a counter offer and you don't have some writing on there to show that you're working with the customer, then that, my friends, is is a bad because the, the manager is gonna think. Basically, the manager will think that you're not working for the store, right? Yeah. So this pr is proof of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, I like it. now, let's say you come back, right? So we went down to step four, right? Mm -hmm. Step five is trade. Then you start talking about trade difference. Right. By the way, why is it better to negotiate on trade instead of price? Like if I had to choose these, why is this better than this? Uh, I mean, well, I don't know what I think is because of how we do trades and I'm being a car guy, maintenance guy, service manager, I know him extremely well. Um, the way we do trades of the market value of a vehicle and the reconditioning cost, and then we still have to make money. That works good for me because there's always a ton of room. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think we'd rather give a little more here than take away. Mm -hmm. I mean, right? Yeah, absolutely. We kind of and check this out. Like, Sometimes, it's easier to do it than yeah. we don't want to take from there if we don't. Yeah, and I know you've only been selling cars a few months. That you are right about that. Good job. But did you know that uh, sometimes customers? Have you ever had a customer take a trade out? You were, oh yeah. Yeah. So what happens if I give them two grand more for the trade? That lowers the amount finance, right? But then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, before the deal's over, they take the trade out of the deal. What happens to this? It go, goes, goes back up. up. That's yeah. right. We hold our gross when we negotiate yeah. on the, tr the difference yeah. or the oh, trade. Okay, okay, that's it. Right. So you always want to negotiate on that first. Um, right. Now, last, you go to price. But once you're down to this point, here's what you're going to do. This is very important. This is the law of give and get, which my buddy John Dawson right. talks about in psychology. But you're going to say, so, so when someone comes to, when you're down to this point in the game and you're negotiating, you're going to say, look, Mr. Customer, I'm going to go to bat for you. I'm going to go see, save you some more money. I need you to be flexible. I need you to be a little open-minded here. But what I'm going to need in order to do this kind of discount or any disc any additional discount, I'm going to need a testimonial video from you. Yeah. Now, 15-second video, you telling everyone how awesome this experience was and how I dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and then I went to bat for you here at the end okay. to save you some money. Is that worth Is that worth uh, 20 bucks a month or 500 right. bucks off? You know. Yeah. All right, yeah. cool. So you'll make a quick video with me? Yeah. Now you got a testimonial video out of it, which, by the way, the customer, do you think they're going to ask for more often again? No. Absolutely not. They're not. They're going to hate even think about it. They hate doing videos more than yeah. sales people hate doing yeah. videos. There's a couple other things you can do, a couple other tricks. You come back with the numbers at one of these stages. Your customer, um, by the way, I will share this video with you, Steve, so you can okay. watch it and practice it. But, uh, but uh, you come back. They hit you again. They want another discount. Here's a pattern to interrupt. Turn it over, just like that. Look them dead in the eye and say, I'm no different than you. I'm gonna to budget too, Steve, and I wouldn't ask you to buy something that you couldn't afford because I wouldn't buy something for my family that I couldn't afford, okay? Right. But you are financing this vehicle, and the main thing is that the payments are affordable for you, all right? Now, I know you picked out this car online. You already knew it was a great price, and ultimately, the main thing is that the monthly payment is affordable for you. So if the numbers work out, right, and I mean by numbers, I mean the payments, where it's right around here, can we get it done today? It's, by the way, all, yeah, you want to be at 340, we're at 357, we're talking fi not even 50 cents a day, all right? You and I both know to get the perfect vehicle with that certified warranty, it's worth 50 cents a day. Yeah. Safe to say, so let's get it done. Please select which option, sign here. Yeah, love see, it. So that's a pattern interrupt, you see that? Now yeah. I'm going to share one more pattern interrupt with you that really, this one's a really good one. If someone's really speaking up on price, 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 this is the last one you can do. Well, there's so many, I got hundreds, but this is a really strong one. You can look at me go, Mr. Customer, here, numbers aside. When it comes to negotiations, I believe there's three types of customers, okay? There's customers that want a fair deal, okay? There's customers that want to win, and then there's customers that want me to lose. 
Right. Which which one of those customers are you? Love it. And then if they, you know, whatever they say is, then you can ask another um, question. That's, that yeah. is strong. I like it. Right? So what if someone said, fair, I want a fair deal? Yeah. Then Fred McCleary in the house, folks. Fred, hey, then what could you ask if they said they want a fair deal? This is a fair deal. I mean, yeah. Or you could even say, or, you know, you could say this is a fair, or you could even say, how is this not fair, guys? Tell me what's yeah, not right, fair right. about it. Help me understand. Ask them, make them the answer. Exactly. What if they say, I want yeah. you to lose? You have a couple choices there. You can either say, well, what do you have against car salesmen? What did, yeah. what did a car salesman do to you? Or what did a dealership yeah. do to you that makes you hate? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you could, or you could even say, well, Mr. Customer, I choose not to work with customers like that. So I, I, I would like to give you a fair deal or even help you win. But at the end of the day, it's, I don't think it's fair to ask me to lose for no particular reason unless right. you have a good reason. Can you explain right. to me? Does that make sense? Yeah, nobody would ever have a reason. No. If they're beating me up on trade, I'll give you one last tidbit here. If they're beating me up on trade or price, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to justify it. Yeah. What and I'm, I'm good at justifying this. You are? This is why your trades worth that? Yeah, really so, good. So, so when you do that, do people want... So, so Steve, what you're talking about is you're good at justifying the trade value because you are we're a mechanic. Right. So what do you do to make, hold, their, hold your ground on the trade value? I, when I ask them, well, what do you think your car is worth aside of the emotional attachment you have to it? What do you really think your car is worth? They tell me a number. I say, where'd you get it? Kelly Blue Book, 99% of the time. Okay, was that trade-in value or private party? Because this is trade-in, right? No, it was trade-in. I said, okay, well, there's always a range on the trade-in. You know, five to 7,000, average at 8,000, you know, or 6,000, whatever. Okay, so, well, let's go walk around. Let's go look at the car. Let me show you something. Do you see the back bumper has all these scratches? You see your tires are almost ready okay. to be replaced? I, you can stop right there. So, so here, the, the reason I, I wanted you to share that with me mm -hmm. is, that's really believable, right? Yeah. You're breaking it down by yep. the item, right? Yep. Just like an itemized checklist like you had in the Marines, right? Yep. Yep. Why the hell aren't you doing that on your discount and your rebates? Damn, you're right. Yeah. You, when you first laid this out, you go, you're getting this, yeah. here's how much you're getting off. Did I? Brother, you can say, hey, here's, you get the $500 military rebate. You get the right, 750 right owner loyalty rebate. And SunTrup, we are giving you an extra $348 of advertising money yeah. that we are devoting to this deal today, which brings your total balance down to 20,149. Um, now, by doing that, when they want a discount, you can look at them and say, okay, wait, I'm giving you the military rebate. I'm giving you the owner loyalty rebate. Uh, I'm giving you that uh, SunTrup advertising money. Let me ask this, what other rebates are you, do you qualify for that we haven't right. included? Right, yeah, I mean, it's See what I'm saying? getting four or five things, break it down, that's good. Because that's, that's right. exactly how I do these, right. it works and you work three times. Exactly, and you weren't doing it here. But now, you, this is your last, you're gonna go here very last anyway now, right? right? So if someone wants a discount, I can see you want the amount of finance to be less, Mr. Customer. Money down. 20%, remember I told you that, it's right. important you plant that seed. Right. So, Steve, uh, let me ask this, what is your, go ahead and write down and tell me, what is your game plan? I want you to write down on the back of this, not this proposal, what are you gonna do What's your game plan from now, from here on, after this coaching session? What are you going to do to hold more gross and, and um, get along better with your management team and uh, negotiate well, better? One, Definitely. and maybe select that over, but you know me, my scatterbrain. One, plant seeds. Okay. Good. Preemptively handle really? those. Yep. Uh, like you were saying, the 20%, mm -hmm. you know, talking about that. Uh, need on And also slash like on with the needs and analysis of getting, I'm getting a lot better at these of the you know asking the right questions to get a lot of this problem solved so that that's big though that 20 percent i need to do more of um two holding holding my ground like the first thing on there when it comes to this i think i mean i don't know what else i can really put in from what i'm doing besides making sure i'm mm -hmm. actually planting the seeds but yeah. once i get to this of so holding ground is the biggest thing um yeah don't just cave right away and then just Yeah, I mean, it's because the I'm here for you. You have to I'm have the authority. Ada I'm adapting to what they want me to be, and it's great, and they love me, and everybody does, but... No, you've got to have authority. But holding is the biggest thing. Um, I, no blank <laughs> pencil. <laughs> Your pencils are going to have writing all I mean, over you know, them. Tony, I've known him. How, I mean, how long have I known Tony? I'm in, he's the boss, and yesterday he said to me, he was like, Hey, go close them on this one. And he's, I was like, all right. He was like, don't come back without a signature. And he's like, he's like, but you'll be back. You'll ask for more. And that's like today when I saw you, I'm like, yes, <laughs> because I'm done with that. I'm, you know, like I want to get everybody a good deal. You know, but it's you know, everybody's already getting a damn good deal. Thank exactly. you. No, it's okay. Um, You're good. And then um, with no blank pencil, in a sense of I want to. Uh, 
what's the word? Um, re -put, put value, value back, mm -hmm. value back into everything. Sure. Um, yeah, always start with the value, the, right? You know, the transparency, really the time, right. you know, yeah. all that. I mean, that's that, those are the biggest things, and I think everything from there. Okay. Well, because the last part of the pricing, well, that's the last thing I would have to go to anyway, mm -hmm. down here, and I shouldn't ever really have to be here except for certain maybe special circumstances. But okay. I mean, I think that's where I'm at. So, so that, that's your game plan. I mean, so how? Uh, so let me ask you a question: How valuable was this time that we just spent sitting down and doing coaching? More valuable than getting up on the showroom and wasting my time. And not to have them gross. So, you know, so, so good. I, lo I love it. Thanks. That's a great response. So how much more money do you think you're going to make for the rest of your career because of this one coaching conversation? A ton. Okay. And what was your I big, mean, what was your biggest takeaway? I mean, just the hold, the hold back like that. I mean, and gotcha. then re putting the value back in the car. I love this no black pencil though. Cause that's going to, cause they're all going to look like this. And so how, how can I, as your coach, help you make sure that this becomes just part of your woven into your routine, your day-to-day -day well, routine with every customer. Are you here all day today? Uh, I'm gonna be heading out shortly. Um, I'm gonna call you later okay. for my first customer and tell you. Okay. And then I'm gonna just keep getting back with you. Okay. And making sure it's on me and- Do you want me you know, to, do you, would you like for me to check in and at any yeah, time? Yeah, absolutely, please. Like I'll, you know, a couple yeah, weeks? Yeah. Okay, cool. A couple weeks and see. see. It was an honor, buddy. I'm Thank glad you, I was Sean. able to help you, brother. Thank yep. you very Congrats much. Congrats on your race. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Guys, that is the power of coaching, okay? Coaching, guys, are we doing this every day with our team? Steve, I wanna thank you for letting me, letting you, you know, be my guinea pig for this. Thanks, guys, appreciate it. <laughs>